Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Today, well, right now, it's 84.3 on top. Water's hot. Today, we're going to be focusing on catfish, blue cat, and channel cat, possibly a flathead. One never knows. Now, I just got through catching four big gizzard shad. I mean, they're, they're big ones. I'm going to chunk them up and we're going to do a little bottom bouncing today. A lot of different rigs you can use for bottom bouncing. But in a lake situation, I like this one. All right. I got them on ice right here. They're pretty good sized gizzard shad. I skipped all the details about catching them. As you can see, I had to catch them up in grass. They were real scattered. Bait's real scattered right now. Um, and they were very difficult, very difficult to catch. Let's just go ahead and cut his head off. We may use that head if there's some good fish in here, but I really don't know what size fish are in here. I'm just going to chunk one up about, not very big at all, about that size right there. We'll just start off with that. That right there, ain't that a nasty, gruesome mess? But now you're gonna get nasty of when you're catfishing. It's just that part, it's just that way. This is a two alt Eagle Claw Circle C, a cheap Walmart special. You see them in Walmart all the time. This same hook, folks, I landed a 61 pound catfish not too long ago, three months ago, I think and uh, on that size hook. So they're good hooks. They're cheap, but they're good. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish light today. I'm gonna have some fun. Today, uh, this is a H2O Express, six foot eight rod. It's rated for six to 12 pound test line. It's a medium action rod, but I have 14 pound test red Cajun line, mono, on it. And right here's a little speed spin, which I hadn't used in a couple years. Um, great little reel. Great little reel. I'm gonna tell you, it's called the Tournament Pro TP3. 10 ball bearings, smooth as it can be. Made by Lou's. And what I have right here is a 3 8 sinker, egg sinker. And if you noticed, you'll see two rubber bands, a red one and a yellow one, run through it, which I'll show y'all how to do that at the end of the video. A lot of you may already know, some may not know. This eliminates the need for a swivel. Now, we have some current um, pulling here on the Tennessee River right now, but it's not much. It's not enough to twist my line up. So I just wanted to rig it up really simple, something quick. Now this way, being that it has rubber bands in it that I've pulled through here, is that weight's not going to slip, folks. I can see it takes a lot of effort. I can slip it down or up to adjust my leader length. Now I'm going to start off about right there, about 16 to 18 inches. And we're gonna start on this column. Now, I don't know if there's any blue cat in here. I don't have any idea, but they should be at least some channels. So we're just gonna drop it down here. And the water depth right here is 22 feet. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm fishing some rough, rough stuff. There's a lot of a lot of uh, debris around these columns. And that's really what I want. Let's adjust her drag right here. When I get bit, I got the reel. I can't jerk. Remember, we're using a circle hook. And now I've got it on the bottom. Well, I've got it on the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is pick it up and let it fall, boom pick it up a few inches off the bottom, the bait, and then boom, just like that. Then I'm gonna hold it there for a few seconds. 
Now, an active catfish has no trouble picking that bait up just like that. None whatsoever, folks. They're not near as sluggish as a lot of folks make them out to be. What I mean by that, you, a lot of times, most of the time, especially if they're actively feeding, you don't have to just anchor and cast out and wait for the bag. Either, the way I'm fishing is I'm gonna present this bait to as many fish as I possibly can by keeping it in front of their face to get the strike. Once they detect that bait, they'll come to it and they will eat it, no problem. There's fish, folks. He's easing off with it. Let's watch him right here. Uh, he's still there. There we go, we got him. First fish of the day, and it feels like a good one. Yeah, well, y'all can see. It is a good one. Now, I don't know what we have here. It's not a blue. It's not a channel. It's either one or two things. It's a big, huge drum. Oh, or it's a look here. It is a blue. <laughs> it's a good blue. <laughs> he wasn't fighting just right. And he was wrapped up in that line. Pretty good blue. Now that fish hit in a depression, in a hole. Let's go ahead and loosen this drag here. That fish is real green right now. I enjoy, I cannot tell y'all how much I enjoy using light line for these bigger fish. Now this is not a great old big blue. I mean, I'm not fishing for just giants. Not today, I'm just fishing for fun. But a fish just of this size is an opponent for, for medium, medium gray tackle. I can't talk. I love this stuff. Powerful fish right there on this light line. Let's go ahead and add him. Uh, he ain't ready. But they got a lot of power and fun to catch, a sporty fish to catch. There he is. Look at there, what a fish. Let's catch another one. Let's let him go right here. He's still got a few battle scars on him. That was fun with light tackle, I guarantee y'all. Now I caught that fish, like I said, in a hole. In a hole, right up there on that column. I've done drifted back. But the water was around 22 feet and all of a sudden it went down to 25. It was just a dish right in the center of that column. Oftentimes, that's what you need to look for. They'll lay in those little dishes, face the current, and wait for something to come to them. It's that simple. Let's catch another. Whoa! They. That one tried to sneak up on me. He did, but he got caught. Well, this ain't a very big fish right here. Little flathead. That fish just sat there with it. That's typical of a flathead catfish. Um, I felt him hit it. It was just boom. All right, he just laid there with it. <laughs> That's the smallest flathead I've caught in a long time. And at the start, before we start fishing, I mentioned the fact that we could catch a flathead. Fishing like this, you don't necessarily have to have. Now live bait's better for flathead, whether they're big ones, little ones, they don't make any difference. 
but long as your bait is freshly caught and you keep them on ice folks this cut bait will catch all species of catfish and that's the baby flathead ain't he pretty him is pretty and he come out of about 22 feet of water all right let's let him go i want him back my goodness he ain't waste no time about it one never knows instead of a little pound and a half or two pound flathead that could have been a 20 pounder you don't never know <clears throat> okay folks here's the main line right here here's the main line and i used a three eighths today that's all i needed okay let's take our egg weight whatever weight you want to use now this is great for uh, using a bullet weight for bass like flipping mats that's another application there's just a lot of them um slip it through there like that now what i have is a piece of line right here just a piece of line about a foot long just a scrap piece of line and i'm going to take two rubber bands the reason why two is because the hole in this egg weight's pretty good size now on a bullet weight bass fishing you would just need one rubber band but just see i've got these two trout with a line i'm just going to take one end i'm just going to take one end right here and stick it through like that and then i'm, then I'm going to take the other end and do the same thing same direction it don't matter if you go to the top of the weight or bottom, just as long as it's the same direction. Stretch these rubber bands and then pull. Okay, now you're done. All you have to do is take a pair of scissors and just snip the ends off. Now this will not slip if the rubber bands are tight enough. If you use the correct size rubber bands, it won't slip at all. You can have whatever length leader you want. Just now, we just need to tie a hook on, obviously, but you can have a two foot, three foot leader, whatever. Now, after you catch a few fish, what you want to do, especially with this light line, of course, is to cut it off and tie you another knot. And you can slip this weight up or down without damaging your line at all. I'm sure y'all can think of a lot of different ways y'all can use this. Uh, great for live bait too. Woo wee. There we go. There we go. <laughs> my, my, my. I was admiring all these mayflies right here, folks. See how many is along this column. Just take her time and have her fun. Now, the, the thing about this light line fishing, I'm not going to kid y'all. 14-pound test line is pushing it. It's pushing it. And the reason why is because if that catfish hits that bait, if he's big enough, he'll inhale that little bait without any trouble. And the line, instead of the circle hook hooking him on the outside of the mouth, the line will be inside of his his mouth and those teeth are razor sharp on the outside fringes or even in the inside fringes of a blue cat of course i'm not convinced this is a blue cat it feels like it but i love light line fishing you're always taking a chance but you're giving the look at the bubbles coming up right here yeah it's a blue they fight a little bit different this time of the year they really do. When the water temperature gets around 78, 79 degrees, these fish fight a little bit different. Just steady pressure. Make sure you have a reel that has a, a, a good drag system. Smooth. And you can land a big fish. Here he comes right here. He's not as big as I thought he was, but he's a good blue. Good enough. A lot of fun, a lot of sport. I'm wanting to tell him to quit and all kinds of stuff, but I know that's just going to be 
that's just not gonna happen. That's just not gonna happen, not with a blue cat. They'll quit when they darn well get ready. Yeah. Come on in here, boy. Got you. Let's wet the deck a little bit and take a look at this. Okay, light tackle fish there. Woo! Okay. I'm talking about woo. I'm not talking about anything but woo. Forget about all them big words. I don't know big words anyway. Can't spell them. Can't say them. Well, hey, stop it. You know what? That's a lot of fun, but I'm gonna tell y'all something. I lost one bigger than that long ago, but what did happen is just like I explained. The hook went too deep, didn't slip enough to catch him on the outside fringe of the mouth, and it caused me to, to uh, saw my line in half. Well, he's been, he's been pissing on me for about 30 seconds, and I didn't know it, but he's long, lanky, ain't been off bed, ain't had time to gain weight yet. Look at him. Let's let him go. Golly, he peed all over me. Hey, Marco, if you'll go right over on that bank over there, you'll probably catch a fish. We call four or five pretty good fish over there all day. That's pretty good, too. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move back. Back here where this indention is, this hole, and see if there's another one held up. If there's not, we'll just move on and hunt some more areas. But a lot of times, they can be several fish held up in one hole. And like I said, that hole is about midway right there. Or a dish. And that fish was not there by an accident. He wasn't there by accident at all. It's the nature of these catfish to do this around these bridges. Come on, grab it, boy. There we go. He couldn't decide whether he wanted it or not. He's got it now. That's a good fish right here, folks. Let me get him away, away from these columns. When it comes to fishing, it don't make any difference to me if I'm fishing for giants or not. Catfishing is faddish. It's become a faddish sport where big fish are, are the target. And I can understand that, but now there's a lot of great fishing out here using smaller baits, light line, you can catch a lot more fish like this is what I'm saying. If you really want to. And every once in a while, you'll catch a good one. You sure will. May take you some time to land him, but still, that's the sport of fishing. There's the bubbles. That's a blue cat, I believe. No, I want y'all to look what a channel cat. God, he just barely hooked too barely hooked. I want to get him in the net. That's the biggest channel cat I've caught in a long time. Here on the Tennessee River, that's a big one. Doggone right or in this neck of the woods. My goodness. I've always said if a channel cat got as, as big as a blue cat, they wouldn't be no comparison as far as fighting. Because these dudes right here fight for their size. Never would have thought that. Beautiful fish, though. Let's let him go. <laughs> Woo! Man. That fish was mean. Whoa, here. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Oh, my. Let's get this in the way from the columns. You know, Clarence ain't really that big a man, folks. But he's got a knot right on the back of his neck. It's just a hump. This is a blue cat right here. Nice little fish. Pulling like a big boy. 
Oh, here he comes. Look at him spitting up all them bubbles. He decompressed himself. I brought, bring him up slow. That's the deal. If you don't want to kill him, bring him up slow. Have you fun with them and release them. Look at there. Look at there. Oh, look at there. That's what I'm talking about. Quit. Stop it. Now you're done. They ain't no way. You're captured. It's over for you. Let's put him in the boat. My goodness. Now that one's a little bit healthier than the last couple I call. Them other ones was uglier than homemade poop. Let's get him off right here. A lot of fun on light tackle. Now imagine sticking one about 61 pounds. Well, several fishing trips ago, I did, and I had to fight that fish down with 14 pound line, and it was tough. It could happen out here. You know, you never know. That's a nice fish right there. To me. Let's let him go. Quit. You're being a bad, bad girl. That's a girl fish, I can tell. Golly, where'd she go? All right. I don't know nothing else to do. That... that The net's hung up, and I'm wanting to sling something. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy.